Good morning, everyone. A couple of weeks ago, I took a trip down to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Generally, it's considered that the hike from Indian Gardens Campground back up to the rim is the most difficult part of the rim to rim hike. I wanted to go down there, familiarize myself with that hike, and just see how strenuous it was. If in taking that hike, I found out it was beyond my capabilities, then it didn't make any sense to continue training for the hike. So I wanted to make a video about what the experience was, partially for entertainment value and partially for people who may be training to uh, take the rim to rim hike uh, and, and talk a little bit about what I learned. The first thing I want to say is that I did not find the hike to be soul crushing as many people have said. To be sure it was strenuous, but soul crushing it was not. But there were a few things I learned along the way. It was really crowded on the trail. Then I must have passed a hundred people and two mule trains on my way down to Indian Gardens Campground. Uh, and, and I stopped and talked to probably eight or ten people who were really struggling. They were on their way back up and they were really struggling. And consistently I got the same complaint from them. They weren't talking about the heat, although this was in the beginning of June, so the triple digit temperatures had not hit yet. But they weren't talking about the heat. They weren't talking about how strenuous the trail was. They weren't talking about the humidity. What they were talking about was the altitude. And it made a lot of sense because the people I were talking to seemed to either be coming from the southeastern part of the United States or from Southern California at sea level. So one suggestion I would make is if you're planning to do the rim to rim hike, or if you're just planning on doing the hike down to the Colorado River and back up, I would suggest if you can get there a couple of days or maybe three days before you take the hike and give yourself time to acclimate to the altitude, uh, it would probably serve you well. The second thing that I learned while I was on the hike, which really surprised me, was how many people that I saw on the hike who did not have hats on. And one thing I would say is that if you're going to be taking this hike at that altitude in that relentless sun, it's absolutely essential that you have a hat on. A, a cover will keep the strength of the sun off your head. The hat that I typically wear, actually, is a hat that has a flap that comes off the back and covers the back of my neck, keeping the sun off the, off the back of my head. Um, and, and also the hat that I wore was a cotton hat, which was really very helpful because I could soak it at every one of the watering holes and just put a wet hat on my head, keeping my head cool. Now, as far as the trail was concerned, the trail was in very, very good shape. Uh, considering the number of people and mules that go up and down that trail every day, it was surprising. But on the trail in numerous places for, in some cases, a little bit of distance, the trail is crossed with these wooden ribs. Now the ribs are in there to prevent erosion, but the problem is that these ribs are spaced smaller than or narrower than your normal stride. So you're basically taking baby steps when you're going down these ribs. So you're putting your full body weight on your knees as you're going down and you're doing it on a shorter stride. I found that to be very strenuous on my knees and as a result of that, one of the things that I did learn is I'm going to go back into the gym and do more work on my um, quads and on my hamstrings. And I ski all winter, so I have pretty strong knees, or at least reasonably strong knees for my age. But even, uh, even with that toning of my, of my knees, found that those ribs were really problematic over time. Um, a couple of other things that, uh, that I wanted to talk about real quickly. One of them is the Forest Service recommends that you bring three liters of water with you on the hike. Uh, you have, a, at least as far as down to Angel's Gardens, I'm sorry, down to uh, Indian Gardens, you do have uh, water about once every mile and a half, uh, but it probably is a better idea just to follow their recommendations and drink water, drink a lot of water. The other thing that I would say, and uh, this is interesting because I got this from a number of people, is I actually went down there with two trail bars and four small candy bars, and I ate everything. And if I had it uh, to do over again, just that section of the trail, I probably would have brought at least two more small candy bars and one more 
and one more um, energy bar with me. Consistently, I heard people complaining about the fact they just didn't bring enough food with them. Now, as far as shoes were concerned, this is my recommendation. Wear the lightest pair of shoes that you can wear with good traction. There's no need, given the condition of the trail, there is no need uh, for you to wear heavy over the ankle hiking boots, at least for most people. Uh, lightest you can wear with good traction will, will be fine for you. But one other thing that was really pretty interesting to me, when I hike, I generally wear bamboo hiking socks. I find them to be fairly resilient. And while I did not have a brand new pair of socks with me, uh, the socks they did wear, wear were really had a lot of life to them. And yet when I finished the hike and uh, took my shoes off, I actually had worn holes in the heels of both pairs of socks. So a suggestion I would make is that when you're going to do the, the rim to rim trail, bring at least three pairs of socks with you and you probably want to chair, uh, probably want to plan on changing uh, your socks about every eight miles. Now, one funny thing that did happen to me is I met this uh, volunteer ranger on the trail. She was actually a, she was actually a bit of a sourpuss. But one of the things she warned me about was a section of the trail from uh, Indian Gardens up to Three Mile House. She said they called that the corkscrew. And what happens in that section of trail is that you have a number of switchbacks that are kind of tightly packed going up a steep section. So you're going back and forth when you're doing it. Of the entire uphill, which was fairly strenuous, I found that part of the trail to be the most strenuous. So you just want to mentally prepare yourself that from the area between Indian Gardens up, or from uh, yeah, Indian Gardens up to Three Mile House, that's going to be a pretty tough section. Take your time, take a lot of rests, and uh, after you get up to Three Mile House, although it does remain strenuous, it's not as bad as that initial section. Now, one really good thing that happened to me on the hike that I was very pleased about, uh, I talked to a couple of rangers and told them about my age and my abilities and what I was planning to do. They suggested I plan on probably eight to eight and a half hours to do the hike. I actually did the hike in about six hours and 20 minutes. Now, I was pushing the whole time, but I did it in about six hours and 20 minutes, and that included a 20-minute break at, uh, at Indian Gardens. So um, I was really pleased with that time and very encouraged by the time. So in conclusion, I'm going to continue to train. I will make videos uh, of my training throughout the summer. And then, uh, good Lord willing, on September 20th, I'll be up on the North Rim and ready to make the Rim to Rim hike. So in, uh, in closing, onward and upward, and I will see you on the trail.